Coming up on this episode of Falmouth in Focus, we take a look at the local election results. We see how the start of school is going for the T-Ticket School in its temporary locations. We get an update on happenings from the police department from Chief Edward Dunn. And Ryan Collins of My Fishing Cape Cod brings us his local fishing report. All this and much more on this edition of Falmouth in Focus. Hello and thank you for watching Falmouth in Focus, FCTV's current affairs program. I'm Liz Lerner, the Membership and Outreach Coordinator for FCTV. The Town of Falmouth special election and the state primary were held on Thursday, September 8th, and FCTV was happy to bring the results live to our viewers. Winners in the major contested elections are Doug Brown for Falmouth Selectman, Dylan Fernandez in the Barnstable Dukes in Nantucket District Democratic Primary, Matt Patrick in the 3rd Barnstable District Democratic Primary, and Mark Aliegro in the Representative in Congress 9th District Republican Primary. Thank you to all of our volunteers for help covering the election. 2016 marked the 15th anniversary of the September 11th terror attacks. This past Sunday, Falmouth Fire Rescue held a 9-11 memorial service to honor the 343 firefighters who died when the Twin Towers collapsed. Chief Small made opening remarks, the Pledge of Allegiance was recited, and a moment of silence was held for those fallen. The ceremony was held at the fire department's headquarters on Main Street at the September 11th memorial that displays twisted metal from the towers. Thank you to FCTV's Michael Sperling for bringing us that footage. Schools begun for all of the town's public school children, but one school had a few unique challenges to overcome at the beginning of this school year. We checked in with a T-Ticket school to see how the start of school is going for them. Actually, I was amazed at how well the first few days of school have gone. Um, the kids have been amazing. The teachers have um, been great. Everybody's been so flexible and so um, willing to just go with everything. It, things went like clockwork. Uh, we were so prepared and things went better than I could have anticipated that they would. The buses came in, uh, everybody was in their stations, everybody was out there greeting them, the children as they came in, and the parents have been wonderful, the community's been wonderful. As you know, our stuff a bus and every other fundraiser that we had gave us the supplies we needed to start off. The classrooms look fabulous. Uh, everything has been just wonderful. It, it's, the transition has been as smooth or even better than I could have expected it to have been. Discovered that we needed to move to a new place, we were allowed to teach together in our new digs here at the East Falmouth School. And as you can see, our classroom is now a gym. We had a lot of fun setting everything up this year. Mrs. Boudreau and I have worked together for a long time, so we somewhat knew how to help each other to make, put things together. Well, when I initially got the phone call, I think I panicked. Uh, and then when I heard that, you know, Skylar would be at a middle school, I think I panicked more. Um, and I didn't tell her anything until I knew when the meeting would be and I had more information because I didn't want her to be nervous. I wanted her to be able to ha have all of her questions answered. And I went to the meeting with a list of probably 20 questions. And they answered all, I think, but one of them without me even having to ask a single one. The plan was well thought out. It was very detailed. They thought of all of the parents' concerns ahead of time and had all of those answers ready for us. So I left that meeting feeling really impressed with the district. They had all of the stakeholders present, every principal in the district present, which I think was really impressive and just shows what a wonderful district we have overall. And, um, you know, the only concern I did have was with recess, thinking my second grader being at recess with fifth grade would be a challenge. And on the first day of school, I got a letter home that said she'd be having recess alone. So even the one concern I had, they addressed before it even became a concern. So I just, um, I love Falmouth. I think it's a fantastic district. I'm proud to have both of my children here. And both of them have transitioned exceptionally well. And everybody has been so welcoming to everyone. Well, I thought I was um, going to uh, not know where my classroom is and I'm going to be like left out and get lost in the school. 
Well, I looked and all my teachers were, well, like Miss Sheikwin was there, mm -hmm. and my friends were from last year was there too. Looking forward to going back to the Tea Ticket building though, and the future? Uh, not really that much because I like this better. <laughs> this school better. Stay tuned to learn how the community came together to help the Tea Ticket School later in the show. Thank you to FCTV's Ryan Weber for that piece. Chief Edward Dunn sat down with FCTV recently to give us an update on what's happening in the police department. Been a very busy summer. Um, in fact, this morning I was just looking at the, uh, the call log and we're up to, so far, uh, 20,000 calls for service since the first of the year. Um, so uh, it's kept, it kept us very, very busy. And of course, this time of year, we have all these, you know, all our summer events. We've got through the 4th of July again without any incidents. Um, and, and I believe the community really got to enjoy the celebration, which was great. I think our next large event will be the uh, Cape Cod Marathon, which is sometime in October. And then, of course, the uh, annual Christmas parade. Um, and. Um, an event that we're really happy to uh, have here at the police department is the annual Stuff a Cruiser. And that's going to be held again. Something new that we started last year, and we are going to continue it again this year, is the um, Junior Police Academy. And we do that with the, uh, we've partnered with the uh, Morse Pond School. Um, that will probably happen sometime over the winter session of their after-school program. The other piece that's happening in the police department again is, is that we're preparing for the uh, consolidated dispatch uh, that affects both the police and the fire and the community. Uh, here, I mean, the police department here, we're, we're, we're quite excited about it because again, I believe we're going to give better service to the community because you're going to have a police dispatcher and a fire dispatcher side by side. Um, and as some of you are aware or may not be aware is that the Dispatch, the consolidated dispatch will be here at the police department uh, in the lower level of the police department. We're still currently working uh, our opioid problem that we have, but we're no different than any other community in this nation. And I know you've seen it on TV and in the newspapers every day. Um, our offices in the last quarter have responded to 54 overdoses. It's probably gone up since since that number may be even closer to 60 at this point. Is there a solution? Everybody's working on it. It's an educational piece. Um, we had this summit, the, the two-day summit up at the Seacrest this year, where we have uh, groups who are currently working on that, and there is some educational pieces going on, and that's what it's gonna take. It took us a long time to get to this spot, so there's no quick and easy answer. And, uh, but there are many people here in Falmouth uh, that are working on that program, uh, and many people in the Commonwealth as well as across the country. Thank you to FCTV's Jeff Wyman for that update from the Chief. It's time now for Three Things from Town Hall, FCTV's condensed version of the takeaways from recent municipal meetings. Selections are chosen based on community impact. American Legion Post 111 of Woodstock, Connecticut presented Selectman with a new U.S. and state flag. Uh, where were, oh, I'm from Woodstock, Connecticut. <laughs> And while I was commander of that post, uh, I recruited my brother Jack as a member, long distance though he may be. And in recent years, I've found out that he has been donating flags to kids, especially over at uh, the uh, friendlies here in town. So we acquired a couple of flags and decided to donate them to Falmouth Town Hall. I see you've already got a set, and if you choose to send them along to the school for their use, or any other function that you prefer, I'll have no objection to that. New steps have been taken by the selectmen in the ongoing Senior Center project. Uh, our recommendation, the last time we came to you, we put forth uh, two locations at Falmouth High School in accordance with our charge. Uh, uh, at tonight's meeting, uh, as it says in my letter, we are recommending site three, one site at Falmouth High School. Uh, site 3 is the uh, location of the uh, girls field hockey field directly north of the tennis courts at Falmouth High School. Uh, we feel that that site meets, um, meets our needs both now and into the future. Um, so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion from the board? 
And that is to uh, approve the high school site number three. All those in favor say aye. 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 <gasps> Opposed? No. No. Four new town positions were considered by the selectmen. Housing coordinator and community development director are certainly not new uh, to the board of selectmen. Um, we've been discussing them uh, at different times. Uh, uh, one and now both. Uh, actually, uh, the community development director position goes back to your previous strategic plan. Housing coordinator is, of course, as you know, in a strategic plan you just adopted this evening. Um, and so these are uh, well known to us. You have a copy of the uh, draft job descriptions for the, both of those positions. Uh, if the board uh, so ordains, these would be moving forward uh, to town meeting for consideration for approval. The selectmen did vote to approve those two positions as well as fleet services manager and facilities manager. They will now be considered during fall town meeting. To see the meetings in their entirety, check out FCTV's website and click on the Government Channel 15 link at fctv.org. Once a month, we get to feature a local fishing report from Ryan Collins of My Fishing Cape Cod. Here's his take on what's biting in the area. Hi, this is Ryan from MyFishingCapeCod.com, and I'm happy to report that peanut bunker are starting to appear along the Cape and Falmouth coastline. This school of peanut bunker was filmed in a local harbor on the Upper Cape, and I would expect the bunker to draw in more false albacore as we progress here into September. Places to look in Falmouth for false albies include Knobska Point and down along the Elizabeths which you're seeing right here and you can also head east and that's what we did last week during one of our My Fishing Cape Cod group trips. Perfect. We found our albies off of New Seabury, and most of them were on the small side. But I would really expect the albie bite to get pretty good here, both off of the Vineyard Sound Falmouth coastline and inside Buzzards Bay. Now, aside from albies, right now is a great time if you have a small boat. In particular, small tin boats that can get you in tight to the rocky Falmouth coastline. Stripers are beginning to migrate south through Buzzards Bay. And if you have a small boat that can get you in tight to the boulders, you'll have a very good chance of landing some big fish. Now this is a school that I filmed recently in less than six feet of water. And these bass were cruising in towards shore, in around rocks and boulders. You could certainly have caught them from the beach. But I have been targeting these fish from the 12 foot tin boat. Two feet of water. And some of them have been very good size. Right here we have a nice 41 incher caught on a live eel. Wow. And I would really expect the Falmouth <laughs> coastline to produce oh some goodness. big fish, especially for folks using live eels nice one, huh? as we mm -hmm. progress oh, towards man, October. Sweet. Thank you, Goose Hunt. Now, the fly rod has also been working well for me. would not be doing this if they didn't. And when bass are tuned in on here. the peanut bunker, Absolutely no clue where I think the fly rod cool. can really stand There's out. Fish I've ever caught using the fly rod on and I'm very new with fly fishing, but that little orange fly has been working very well for me. And let's not forget about the Cape Cod Canal. Members of my fishing Cape Cod have been doing extremely well over the past few weeks. Not every day is lights out, but there are some big fish, and I would expect the canal to produce very well this fall. As always, tight lines take care, and I'll see you over on MyFishingCapeCod.com. Thank you to Ryan for that great information. We're going to take a quick break to learn about an adoptable cat from People for Cats, but when we come back, we'll take a look at how the community came together to support a local cause and one quite far away. We'll learn about a new show that focuses on local businesses as well. Stay with us. Butch is a three-and-a-half-year-old short-haired black cat. 
He's a recent addition to People for Cats who's adapting well and has joined the other cats in the suites. He loves attention, especially belly rubs and being gently scratched around the face and ears. Butch can be vocal. He likes to greet you when you come home and will let you know when it's time for him to eat. Indoors is his domain and he's never been outside, but he enjoys watching the squirrels and birds from a porch or window. Butch loves playing with just about anyone or anything and is always eager to join in the fun. He would be a great family cat, but would probably do best as an only cat. For more information, please visit our website at peopleforcats.org. Welcome back. Earlier in the show, you saw how the beginning of school went for the T-Ticket Elementary School students who were relocated to alternate schools in town due to asbestos removal. Now here's a look at how the community came together to help teachers who couldn't access their supplies. T-Ticket has a delayed opening due to asbestos. Um, they plan on opening within two months after the school start. Nobody is allowed in the building, so preschool K and 1 are being moved to East Falmouth and second, third, and fourth are going to Morse Pond. None of the teachers have any supplies, so we are doing a stuff a bus to get all the teachers their necessary supplies to teach our kids. So there, were, there was a request for 35 teacher kits that included a whole host of items, and all 35 kits were donated by Center Plate of Mashpee. I'm here to donate because I went to T-Ticket School and my brother goes to T-Ticket School and we're here to support T-Ticket School. I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone for their generosity and support over the past few weeks. When we first heard that we wouldn't be able to enter our school for the beginning of the school year, I really had no idea of the amount of support and the extent of the generosity that we would experience from this community. And you've come forward in ways that I could never have imagined. Most recently, we were blessed with Stuff a Bus event that generated an enormous amount of supplies, materials, and books for our students and staff. Today, we, provide, we provided a tote container filled with pencils, pens, tissues, wet wipes, post-it notes, paper, notebooks, many other supplies and materials for our students and our staff members that are essential to our teachers' classrooms. Additionally, we received many, many books for our students so that we can set up a library for them while we're displaced from our school. At this point, we want you to know that through your generosity and your caring support, we're at a point that we have the supplies we need to begin school in a safe and supportive environment. Thank you again for your support and your generosity. We truly appreciate all you have done for us and we appreciate your partnership while we have been displaced from our school. Thank you. Even more school supplies were donated at a Touch a Truck event that was held by community members on the Saturday of Labor Day weekend at the Cape Cod Fairgrounds. The Wakoit Congregational Church and the Falmouth Jewish Congregation teamed up to host a concert fundraiser to benefit Louisiana flood victims recently. And as you'll find in this piece, it's personal for quite a few locals. My name is Rich Marvin and I'm at the Wakoit Congregational Church on September 11, 2016 with my wife T. Marvin and our Falmouth Jewish Congregation is co-sponsoring with the Wakoit Con Congregational Church a flood relief benefit program with live Cajun music that you probably hear in the background and all sorts of good Cajun food and lots and lots and lots of people. It's a stunning crowd. Well, I'm a member of the Wakoit Congregational Church and uh, we, uh, the flood happened. I was down home in May and I started posting pictures of the flood. It wasn't very well publicized up here. So um, I started posting it online and Nell said, you know, we ought to have a fundraiser. Our minister said we ought to have a fundraiser for the flood victims in Louisiana. So that's how this all came to be. Well, we're from uh, the affected area, from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and my wife's family, uh, 60 family members, became impacted by the storm, many of them losing everything that they've owned. Uh, this is her brothers and sisters and our two kids, the, all of their in-laws lost everything, absolutely everything. If you can imagine losing all of the stuff from your whole life, um, that's what happened. So uh, we've been telling our story and trying to raise attention to it, 
And our rabbi and Pam Rothstein, the religious director, said, um, hey, the Wakoit Church is having a benefit for Louisiana. We should get you guys together with them. And so that's what happened. Nell called us from the Wakoit Church and said, we'd love for you to show a slideshow and talk about your family and how it impacted them. And, uh, and we ended up here and with a fantastic crowd, and we're very excited about it. It's about 45,000 homes were flooded out in about nine parishes. And if you want to donate, you can go online and find a number of places to donate. Uh, there's people that cook food directly, and I was online the other day, I saw a place that cooked 1,000 something meals for people. And I saw a man who still takes a boat back and forth to work because his farmland still flooded. So we really need to pitch in and it'll be years till things turn back to normal. So whatever anybody can do would be deeply appreciated. It was a storm that missed the opportunity and window for national giving. Uh, FEMA still has some issues uh, down there, so uh, our family isn't getting help from them. So we, we started our own little GoFundMe for just our family. And, uh, and it hasn't raised a lot of money, but it sure has inspired a lot of our family members that are other people are out there thinking about them. Thank you to FCTV's Alan Russell for that piece. Every episode on Falmouth in Focus, we like to feature our members. This episode, we'd like to feature the Falmouth Chamber of Commerce in their new show, a television version of the newsletter, Coastlines. Here are some of the show highlights. I'm over here in Buzzards Bay with Rich Davis, the executive chef on board the dinner train run by the Cape Cod Central Railroad. Hello, Rich. How are you today? Hi, Mike. How are you? I'm doing great, thanks. Really excited. We're going to be getting on the train and going for a ride. My first time. I know a lot of people out there are dying to know all about it. Yeah, what are the challenges with cooking for 208 people on a train that's moving and people who are looking out the windows and maybe not paying attention 100%? It, it's kind of, it, it's different, but it's also the same. I mean, a tenderloin is a tenderloin. Mm -hmm. To make a good Bernays sauce, you got to have the right ingredients. So it all starts with quality ingredients. And as you adapt, there's things in the restaurant you have to do, there's things on the train. I mean, you can't be poaching eggs. We have a, we have a, almost like a, we have an eggs Oscar, which is similar to an eggs Benedict, and it requires poached eggs. You can't be poaching eggs with the train moving. You've got to poach your eggs ahead of time and hold them. So there's a lot of different little quirks that you, 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 you learn to adapt to on a train. Now, I noticed we had to wait for the train bridge to come down, uh, but somebody was saying it's really not the train bridge, it's a boat bridge, it's for the boats, but Tell us a little bit about that and how that impacts the business. Well, interestingly enough, the, 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 the canal lift bridge was obviously built to, to support the rail traffic, uh, and it was a predecessor bridge to it from back in the 1800s. That bridge was constructed in 1935 when they widened the canal. Um, but uh, maritime traffic does have the right of way, um, and although the Army Corps of Engineers works with us as well as the MBTA, when they operate the passenger trains across it, um, so we try to get a, a, a window that we can we, that they'll uh, allow the bridge to be dropped uh, to support our trains. This restaurant was formerly Peking Palace, and I'm here with owner Sharon Hong and her new partner Addie Zhang. So Sharon, tell us what your thoughts were about the change in the name of the restaurant. I think it's a very good idea for the Chinese the name because the Peking Palace is only the Chinese Chinese. Right now we have Japanese and Hanachi, so that will show the people that we have 18 percent. I was wondering if you know you could just kind of explain a little bit about your vision for Falmouth and you know all that's going on here in Falmouth and what you see going uh, forward with as far as Cape Cod healthcare. Well, Falmouth Hospital is a part of Cape Cod Healthcare is, is such an important entity within our healthcare system. Um, one, this hospital has been here uh, for well over 50 years. It was founded by the community and strongly supported by the community. And as healthcare evolves, I think places like Falmouth Hospital will continue to be even more relevant. You know, the fact of the matter is we've put over $60 million back into Falmouth Hospital the past five years. You've seen us improve not only the emergency room, uh, you've seen us now make big significant investments into JML. You've seen us redo all of our patient floors and make them private. We've repurposed the medical office building and brought radiation therapy here. And, and so much of this was the result of great philanthropic support from our community as well and the support of the members of the chamber in our community that use Falmouth in an overwhelming manner. Um, and we're, we're going to continue to evolve. Good. Now you can say Ready? one, two, three. One, two, three. Thanks 
for tuning in, and we hope to see you at the next edition of Coastlines Television. Thank you to the Falmouth Chamber for sharing their show with us. Keep an eye on Public Channel 13's program schedule for runtimes for their latest episode. David's Old Silver Swim in North Falmouth, named after local dentist David Garber, marked its sixth year of raising money for Compassionate Care ALS, a Falmouth-based organization. One of FCTV's interns, Alex Corey, brings us this piece. So this is the sixth annual David's Old Silver Swim. Um, my sister and I are David's daughters. We put the event on in honor of him. It all raises money for Compassionate Care ALS. Um, which supports families and patients living with ALS um, all, all over the country, but they're based here in West Falmouth. Um, we have about 200 swimmers this year. I think we just barely beat our, our record from last year. And we, um, we're getting close to $50,000, which is our, our fundraising goal for the event. This is the sixth year. The very first year was during Hurricane Irene, which was uh, an unofficial event. We had to cancel the official swim. But um, my next door neighbors, Allie and K.R. McDonald, actually started the event in my father's honor uh, back, back at six years ago. And my sister and I took over running it two years ago. It's really become just like a Garber family holiday. Everyone gets involved. It's amazing how many friends come out of the woodwork to support us and uh, everybody brings something. My aunt is in charge of the t-shirt sales. My sister does the artwork for the shirts. Um, you know, our neighbors do the food. It's, it's really amazing how much everybody wants to help. Thank you to intern Alex for covering that event for us. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, Troy joins us for his look at a Massachusetts organization making a big impact. Welcome back. This episode, Troy gives us his take on ALS One, an organization that had a big presence at the Falmouth Road Race. Good morning, everyone. It's Road Race Sunday. The sun is shining. The crowds are out here. Everyone's excited. The racers, the wheelchair racers are already coming by. And most importantly, two communities are coming together. Hanover and Falmouth in support of ALS One, an amazing nonprofit that's raised over $5 million for ALS research. This weekend, we had the chance to meet with and talk with some of the people behind this inter-community effort. We've had the opportunity to meet some of the people behind this effort. So today, we're going to see even more and see how two communities came together to search for a fuel. So you guys leapt into action, uh, not only today coming here to this event after vacation in Disney, but literally leapt into action to support ALS One. I know, Dana, you go way back with Kevin, and this was just amazing to see how the Falmouth community rallied together in support of this great cause. It really was. I mean, I really went far beyond my expectations. You know, when, we, when I started this, I threw out a number of $50,000, and right when it came out of my mouth, I said, oh no, what did I just say? And But I quickly realized the way the Falmouth people came together, and my wife was so supportive, and all of our friends and businesses here in town, that um, it was really a reality, and that we were going to do it. And we had six weeks to go, and it, it just kind of took on a life of its own, and people started jumping on and doing more things, and like you said, it was just an amazing tribute to the town of Falmouth, how they all rallied behind it and helped me. Although I'm spearheading this, I really owe the credit to a lot of other people. Well, you're doing some amazing work here, and uh, one of the great things that I've seen is how these two communities, Hanover and Falmouth, have really come together uh, from the south shore to the Cape, and dozens of people in this room tonight are united by the belief in one thing, and that is to find a cure. But it was just great to see the sense of community People, many of whom had never met each other, were here tonight in that room hugging and crying and, and clapping and believing in the work that you and all of they are doing. Really, honestly, I cannot think. The, the community of Falmouth has just been so, so tremendous. And, you know, we talk about it a lot in terms of a great model for other towns to join in on the fight. Um, Hanover obviously has a huge connection. It's where our founder, Kevin Gosnell, lived and his family lives. Um, he grew up there. Um, but Falmouth has really just stepped up, kind of just um, uh, quietly, but with a, with a huge force. And so we would love for other towns to step up and see what they can do um, together um, in the same way. Well, thank you for all that you've done and all that you'll continue to do. And 
the community of Falmouth really is thrilled to partner with you and your great organization. Thank you so much. We're excited and we're uh, even more determined now to uh, create uh, ALS Done. So looking forward to that day soon. That's the word, ALS Done. Thank you, Troy. We're always thrilled to see residents use their smartphones to record images around town, just like Troy did, and we want your input too. Become a part of Falmouth in Focus and send your photos and videos to liz at fctv.org or use the hashtag MyFalmouth and Falmouth in Focus to be featured on the show. Thank you to our most recent contributors. We're going to end this episode with a fun video from Mullen Hall teachers to ring in the new school year. Thank you to Ryan Weber for sharing the piece with us and thank you for joining us for this episode of Falmouth in Focus. We'll see you next time. Hi Adam! Hi Nancy! Welcome to the school year! Good to see you! Good to see you too! Are you ready? Great to be back! Yeah.